Time for the sixth annual Porch Fest Quincy Music Celebration. It's coming up this year on Saturday, June 24th from 3 to 9 p.m. We want to welcome organizers of this year's event, Walter Hubley and also Bill Lebo are here to give us a little information about uh, this year's festival, how you can participate, and what you can expect. So, guys, thanks for coming over. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Bill, nice to meet you for the yep. first time. Um, folks might recognize your last name uh, from your, your famous mom, Emily, on the Quincy School Committee. That's right. Yep. <laughs> yep. Still on the school committee here. Yeah. Absolutely. So, but you're active, too, in the Marymount uh, neighborhood uh, organizing. Yeah, of course. Porch Fest. Yep. Yeah, so that's fun. Yeah, street captain uh, for the past uh, five years or so in the, yeah. in the Marymount um, neighborhood. Very good. But, Walter, this is the sixth annual, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's hard to believe looking back how many years we've been doing this and, and where it's come and so forth. It's just, it's great to see. Yeah, I remember uh, the first year you and uh, Ward 3 Counselor Ian Kane had an yeah. idea, uh, thought it, you know, might fly, weren't really sure, maybe five bands you were hoping yeah. <laughs> turned out to be a great success right off the start, right? Yeah, just uh, the city really embraced it. We, we did start off with some, you know, ambitions of maybe five to ten bands in one neighborhood, and then as soon as word got out, we got a lot of, uh, we'll say, interest from different areas of the city, and you know, predominantly that interest was from Squanum, and well, of course my neighborhood, Walston Hill, already knew about it, and then Marymount later, and it was, uh, it's really taken off. It's become sort of like a standard Quincy event each year. People look forward to it. I know they yeah. mark it on the calendars. I'm sure the bands do, uh, yeah. and I'm yeah. sure the volunteers do um, as well. But for folks who don't know, uh, let's just a really quick uh, primer. What is Porch Fest? All right, so Porch Fest is a music festival. Uh, held in three different neighborhoods in Quincy. Uh, that's Marymount, Wollaston Hill, and Squanum. There are about a hundred bands, just over a hundred bands that perform each year on average. And it runs from three in the afternoon till 9 p.m. on the last Saturday in June, which this year is June 24th. And so essentially you just walk around the neighborhood. It's all free to attend. All of the bands are volunteering their time and talent, and a lot of other volunteers are in the background helping to make things work and get things organized. And yeah, you just uh, walk around, enjoy the day. You can uh, go to our website to see the schedule, which will get published about a week before the event. Uh, you, can, you can use your smartphone to look at it while you're walking around, or you can print out a PD from the PDF. And yeah, you just kind of plan out your day and walk around, listen to great music, meet your neighbors, and you know, meet people that you, know, you ha otherwise might ha not have uh, another opportunity to meet. Yes, yeah. Uh, how did it all start? Uh, it didn't start here in Quincy, right? Sure, yeah. yeah. The, the history behind it, the origin story, I guess, would be uh, in Ithaca, New York, back in 2007, it got started. And then over t the years, it just started spreading across North America and, right. and internationally, frankly. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. yeah. And there's, there's a large group of uh, Porch Fest organizers that uh, collaborate together online through social media. And uh, we help each other out. And over time, I've given uh, some assistance to the town of Hull, a little bit to Milton as well, a little bit to Dedham. And, um, just other places that you know we're thinking about getting it started, mm. uh, and I got a lot of help from Jamaica Plain and other areas as well. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so in Massachusetts, w was it first in Jamaica Plain? Do you know? I want to say, yeah, I don't know exactly okay. wh who was the first one in Massachusetts. Okay, yeah. but here in Quincy, anyway, it's uh, been six years going strong now. Um, yeah. How has it changed? Would you say from then till now? Um, well, yeah. I would say we. We do have some food. In the first year, we had a lot of different food vendors, mm -hmm. and we've kind of scaled that back a little bit. There will be a few in each neighborhood. Mm -hmm. but what we found is a lot of the folks in different neighborhoods kind of make a party out of it, mm -hmm. and so there's, you know, they kind of cater their own thing. Um, so I'd say we, we've scaled back a little bit on offering food options. And, um, but a lot of the bands that started in year one, I mean, a lot of them are still with us performing right? every single year. Wow. And it's wonderful, it's amazing. And what's great is over the years, you know, when we first started it, it was really challenging to organize because we were answering the question, what are you trying to do? <laughs> like really often. <laughs> but over the years now, a lot of the repeat volunteers kind of know the drill and they yeah. know what we're doing. And, and then there's some new people, we, we're onboarding a bunch of new bands, and but a lot of them are playing different porch fests around the state, so they kind of know the the deal. They so know when they say porch yeah. fest, what's expected of them, right? Yeah. yeah. They yeah. wouldn't be performing on somebody's front porch, basically, yeah. on a Saturday afternoon right. in June. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think we've had like a bit of a groove too. Like um, we, the, the, we have like the, the repeat porches, the people that like sure. are doing this year after year. Like Wally well, said, organizing their their like family parties around this as well. And then we have the staple bands, like bands in my neighborhood, like the Tokyo Tramps and 
Dark Crushes and new bands like the Dive Frequencies popping up. Like these are like staples now in our neighborhood. And people are kind of expect them to be there. Okay. And we plan around this now. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Are you yourself uh, musically inclined, Bill? Um, I am a big music fan. Okay. All right. And I own a guitar that sits there in my uh, in my office. Okay. Yeah. I used to play it. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, performance is no good without spectators, yes. right? <laughs> I can appreciate very good music. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. Um, Walter, as I recall, the um, the hours have changed over the years, have they not? Yeah. Originally, we started. The, the in the first year we ran it from one to five yeah one, uh, yeah about one o'clock to five o'clock and what we found is that much like other events in the city the people the, the height the height of the attendance was somewhere between three and later mm -hmm. you know i think that a lot of that has to do with you know different soccer games and other <laughs> events going on so throughout much the city on, yeah. so much going on yeah and then people take that opportunity to go shopping and run errands and so forth so saturday stuff right around yeah. three o'clock is when we started seeing more more of the crowd show up yeah. so we shifted the hours to be a little bit later okay and it seems to have worked out well right I yeah mean, it works out very well yeah it's still light out till almost at nine o'clock at by that time yeah so. in june yes yeah in, in september when we did it just at, just during uh, out of covid yeah uh, we did run it until nine, and it was getting pretty dark uh, well, around that yeah, in September. Yeah. So, uh, if we ever had to move it, we would definitely run it a little bit earlier. Yeah. But in June, it definitely works out well. I do want to ask you about how the pandemic impacted it. Did it, were you able to have it every year through the pandemic? No, we no. had to skip a year. Oh, you did. It. Yeah, so 2020, I'm guessing the year that wasn't. We yeah, yeah. Get, we didn't know what we could possibly get permitted. And right. I don't think anybody really knew what to expect going into that year. Yeah. So we put it on pause and came back pretty strong the next year. Yeah. I would say the impact of COVID had a lot to do with um, people not being able to get together in bands, not being able to pl yep. practice together, yep. bands not having gigs to refine what they're doing. And so we did see a lot of bands kind of go into hibernation, let's yeah. say. And, uh, but now a lot of them are back. And as I said earlier, this a good amount of the bands we have are repeat bands that have been with us for a long time. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not the kind of thing that really would benefit from a virtual format. I mean, although certainly you could try, and I know that some bands did and some performers did, but it's it's just not the same. Not the same. It's not no. the same. Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. Well, it breaks it away from its mission, and the mission is to help build community through the shared experience of music, and you're not necessarily sharing the experience when you're in your own home somewhere and exactly. you know, looking over the computer. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole performing arts industry really was so so severely impacted. Oh, yeah. um, that, did you see a full rush come back on the year that you returned? Yeah, yeah. people were very excited to get back to it. And, yeah, and the only ones that didn't really get back to it immediately are ones that, as I mentioned before, they weren't able to practice together. Yeah. So suddenly getting out there again, <laughs> you, you need to get warmed up. You're a little rusty. Yeah. 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 Um, is, has it always been uh, Wallaston, uh, Marymount, Squanto? Yeah, th yeah, those were the sort of initial flagship okay. neighborhoods. We have we, we have had a number of requests to try to expand it beyond those neighborhoods. Yeah. The challenge we have there, and we, we did try it one year in one neighborhood, and, and what happens though is when you spread out the performances over a large geography, you start to reduce the amount of audience that mm. the bands get, and we really value the musicians, their time, their talents, their donating their time. Yep. It takes them time to get there, to get set up, and then sp uh, perform, and then t put everything away, and I it's important that they have a really good audience, which yeah. is why we've stopped the expansion of it and okay. kept it where it was originally, and where we put did it was where we just saw the most organic interest, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Mm -hmm. We put it out there for the whole city to see, and the majority of the requests came from Wollaston Hill, Squanum, and Marymount, okay. which is where we brought it. Yeah. I'm curious, uh, Bill, maybe you can answer is, um, in Marymount, are you seeing maybe faces that you wouldn't normally see in the neighborhood uh, during Porch Fest for so folks who come from yeah. other parts of the city? Yeah, I'd say it's, um, it, it is huge for the people that live in Marymount. Of course. They love it. Um, yeah. But yeah, absolutely. We, we, we are seeing people come in. Um, you know, it, like, like I said before, it's a good chance for people to organize parties around and oh, bring, sure. their, and bring yeah. their, their friends in, but also just people traveling in. Like I've run into people in the streets that travel into Quincy, travel into- Just for this? Just to see this, just okay. to see the band. Some, maybe sometimes they know somebody in the band, but yeah. otherwise they're just there for the event and, and for like the, the awesome vibes and walking around the street and yeah. hear music. So uh, through organizing the Marymount Porch Fest, have you learned about other parts of the city that you might not have been aware of before? Well, my focus is on Marymount, yeah. uh, but that said, I do learn about um, the activities in Squanum and, and mm -hmm. Wallace then. Um, a lot of similarities, right? A lot of sim similarities in those neighborhoods. Um, like Wally said, there was a lot, a lot of organic interest in, in events like this coming out of those places. Mm. So um, that was kind of cool to see those ties throughout, throughout the Quincy, yeah. throughout the whole city. 
Do you find um, you know you kind of get groupies every year? Um, you've got your yeah. you know your your basic crowds that come just for this. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's like an event. Like people are always asking like, throughout the year. People are asking me about like when's the next one. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and it's like it's very like like bands that want to like stay in Squantum because they had an awesome time, or stay yeah. in Marymount because they had an awesome time, or maybe they want, we, we try to like rotate and switch it up a little bit. But yeah. there's a lot of interest in like. Uh, what you're comfortable with and like um, yeah that repeat performance is yeah. kind of cool so and I'm sure you find the same thing uh, at Walston Walter is that right yeah, yeah. so we, we do have two other volunteers who aren't with us today so it's Stacy LeMay uh, is kind of spearheads all of Squanum and my wife Catherine Hubley um, takes care of Walston Hill mm -hmm. and, and I focus mainly on sort of social media and overall higher, higher level organizing and so yeah the similar similar thing that uh, people look forward to it they kind of plan on it yeah. a lot of bands will say oh i want to be back on that porch again because i had a really good time yeah. and um it w i think they build a lot of good relationships between the bands and the people who host the bands on their porch and and they just want to want it to come back again and some people will you know want to mix it up a little bit and go yeah. to a different neighborhood yeah. yeah let's talk about the hosts of the events you know the mm -hmm. the porch volunteers, if you will, yep. folks who donate their homes, right, for this event. So um, I'm sure you get repeat customers for them every year, too. Yeah, a lot of folks, like, so George Burke has been oh. doing it since day one. Okay. He has a, tr a really good-sized porch, and we put the Atlantic Youth Orchestra on his porch, Super, as well yeah. as um, the WSU Bluegrass Band, which I had on our show, your show, uh, several years back when we when I brought the band on from, from the, the bluegrass band that we brought on. Okay. It was, I think it was AM Quincy that you they, they, they Oh, were all right, okay, yeah. yeah. I'm getting old now, Walter, forget these things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to, grill, to put you on the spot on that one. Um, but yeah, it's a, it, there's a, a lot of pr repeat performance, performances lot for bands and porch hosts. They, they kind yep. of build their yearly party around it. So we're recording this on uh, May 25th, yep. and uh, to date, how many bands, how many porches have you got? We have, oh, porches, I don't have a count on okay. that, but we have just over 100 bands registered really? right now. Okay. And we'll be taking registrations right up until the end of this month, and, and we'll even leave it registrations open into June a little bit because we often get cancellations. No, you know, sure. Someone gets sick or yep. someone has a commitment that they can't make it, so we're always we're almost always looking for uh, new bands to fill in, and so it's great to have uh, more bands on the waiting list to, to get in. But we, we generally have a porch for everybody. Mm -hmm. and we put, a, on average, two to three bands on every porch, mm -hmm. you know, separated by a little bit of time to get set up and, okay. and take things down. Okay. Uh, do you need more volunteers? Do you need more Porsches? would love to have some uh, more bands register. Uh, always, as I said, always space for that. And if you have a porch that's in one of the areas that we've outlined on the website. Yeah. We would also love to have uh, have you as an op opportunity for us to maybe uh, put a band there if we have enough. And uh, yeah. So does it have to be a porch? <laughs> Can it be a driveway? It, yeah, or it doesn't necessarily have to be a porch. Okay. So all right. um, we we've had front yards, driveways. They all kind of we make it work. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, but you obviously just under the umbrella of. Yeah, porch use, best, yeah, it's useful to have an, a power outlet outside somewhere that we can get access to and, yeah. and an extension cord. Um, let's talk about uh, the, the nuts and bolts of, uh, you know, facilities, uh, mm -hmm. uh, things like that, uh, road closures, anything like that that folks should be aware of. So some of the neighborhoods on a routine basis will pull a block party permit to block off their streets. Oh, and okay. that's usually where the little kids will tend to con congregate. Uh, so there are some street closures, but we don't close the streets. We do put up signs saying, please drive carefully okay. uh, on the entranceway to the neighborhoods. And um, yeah, logistically speaking, they'll, you know, the map will be available a week, about a week before the event, okay. and, and you can download it. We used to print them out and hand them out, but we're you know, doing that a lot less these days because mm -hmm. everyone seems to have a smartphone mm -hmm. and a printer at home. And uh, yeah, that's and that we'll have a few porta potties in each neighborhood. You have to talk about this stuff. They'll be on the map yeah, as yeah. well. Okay. A and there'll be a few food options in each neighborhood as well. Oh, there will be. Okay. All right. Yeah. And obviously, the, um, folks would have to pay for the food. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's really the only thing you're paying for is is any food that you want to get while you're out there. Sure. Um, so, Bill, what's going to be happening in where in Marymount, and what's going to be happening in Marymount? Yeah. So the, the Marymount area is really congregated, m focused mostly around the school, the okay. uh, Marymount Elementary School in that part of the neighborhood. Um, we have uh, about a dozen porches right now in Marymount, okay. looking for a couple more to round that out um, in, in some parts of the uh, neighborhood. Um, and uh, my wife and I will be hosting for the first time this year. Oh. Usually, usually we're just spectators walking around, but we're going to actually host uh, three bands this year as yes. well. We don't have a porch, so we'll be setting up in the driveway with an outlet and tent and all those things. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and uh, we'll also have, uh, right by our house, Black's Creek Barbecue uh, will be set up uh, selling food uh, for, for the event. Um, and like Wally said, that, that'll be on the map as well. Okay. Um, yeah, so like, yeah, we're, um, we're, we're super excited about hosting this year because this is like one of the most fun things we do in the neighborhood. Really? Um, mm -hmm. We're kind of like, you know, get people out walking around. So uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, well, it's, it's like a built-in block party. I yeah. mean, really, you know, the entertainment's already provided. Yeah. You just have to show up, you know, to have some food and, and enjoy it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's laid back fun, right? Yeah. So it's like, um, beca because of the volunteers hosting their porches and because of the volunteer bands, like it's all, like I said, it's all just set up there and, mm -hmm. and then you can just, uh, Everyone can just come and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about on Walston Hill, Walter? What are we going to expect this year? Where and what? So, yeah, it, it'll be up near the Warren Ave area. Okay. And then there'll be a small a pocket of hu houses down by the Adams Street area on the other on the Forbes Hill area. And we'll have about, I would say, 13 to 15 porches and a similar amount of bands as Marymount. Yeah. And, nice. And likewise for Squantum. Yeah, where and what in Squantum? Yeah, uh, Squantum, think like Bellevue Ave, yep. and then towards the water is generally where most of it is. Okay. So like Monmouth and Park, and then all the way over to um, where um, I'm spacing on the name of the road. That main sort of drive past the elementary school. Okay. Uh, so yeah, usually in that in that area is where the most of the performances will take place. So it won't be hard to find. Right? No, not at all. <laughs> if you just head straight into Squantum, you'll hear the music and you'll, it'll take you right to it. Um, where are the bands from? Just you know, I mean, There's obviously, I don't a lot know, from Quincy. Every single one, but a lot from Quincy. Yeah, a lot from Quincy, but also a lot from kind of all over yeah. New Hampshire. I'd say the furthest away we've ever had a band come to perform was from New York. Wow, okay. but that's you know an outlier the city? more so. From New York City. Yeah, uh, I don't remember exactly where oh, in New right. York that they were from, but uh, but we've had a few from Connecticut. But it's bands that play regionally, generally speaking. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. probably bring their own fan base uh, to the dedicated ones at least, right? The groupies, yeah, if you yeah. will. Yeah, and some of them you know perform around the world as well, but. Wow. And, and they're from here, so they you know they like to perform here in Quincy. Sure. So, do you know do any of them write specific material just for Porch Fest, or is it is it you know stuff? We've out seen of the some library? bands get together for the purpose of Porch Fest. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like there are a couple of friends who play you know, play music together. They'll maybe put together a trio for the for the event itself. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they benefit from it too. But I haven't really heard any content created. I was just going to say, wouldn't that be Porch something, Fest. right? Yeah. yeah. But no. we did we did create a beer this year. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to ask about. So the I was going to say okay. we could segue to that. All um, right. Yeah. So we partnered with Break Rock Brewing, the new brewery in Quincy, out at Marina Bay. Yes. Uh, Jay and the team over there and V, we partnered with them to create a beer, and it is a. California Common is the type of beer that it is. Okay. It's available now at the tap room. It's also on sale at Wollaston Wine and Liquor as <laughs> well as the Milton Marketplace. Okay. And um, the part of the proceeds from the sale of the beer go towards helping to fund the event, things like porta potties and paying for all the yeah, infrastructure that we're doing. Costs, so, yeah. so we're excited to have have uh, Break Rock as a partner and a and, and a sponsor through their uh, donations through the beer. And if you're viewing this show. On Thursday before six o'clock, we're having a beer release party tonight at Break Rock Brewing. Okay, so stop by, try the beer, buy your Porch Fest T-shirt, enjoy you know meeting friends. Yeah. So, what's the name of the beer? Oh, it's Porch Fest Quincy Beer. Okay, <laughs> yeah. What uh, is the process of creating a beer, Walter? <laughs> well, I can tell you, I was I was front and center through the whole thing. So, uh, Vila, the brewer at Break Rock, and I spent a good part of uh, Tuesday evening. I would say a couple of weeks ago. And she took me through the entire process, and I was able to do it all hands-on. You know, put, uh, pouring all the ingredients in, mixing yeah. things, timing things. Learned a lot about the chemistry of making beer. Yeah. I can't say I remember all I of it, but <laughs> my but next question was, how many taste tests did you have to do? <laughs> a few. Okay. You know, you, you got to do quality control. Of course, things. yes. Yeah, and, and then also I worked uh, with a, a graphic designer. Uh, so her name is uh, Kelly McHugh. And she worked with me to create the label. Okay. So I met with her, gave her the concept of look and feel, the kind of thinking that I had around mm -hmm. the event. And she came back with some uh, ideas, and then we worked together to refine it. And oh. I think the label came out really nice. And then her sister, Sarah McHugh, who's the taproom manager, has done some of the social media content for us, which came out really nice. So I, all in all, between making the beer and you know producing the label and producing the materials to promote it. Yeah. Uh, great experience, a lot of fun, learned a little bit, yeah. and uh, yeah, it was great. Well, a whole, I mean, really from, from A to Z when it comes to beer making, right from the manufacturing to the marketing, mm -hmm. you learned, yeah, what's, so what's the label, what does it look like? So it has a porch on it. <laughs> Yeah. Very good. <laughs> to be, expect, uh, to yep. be expected. It uh, has some instruments. Uh, I believe I sent the graphic over. They might be able to overlay it during while we're talking. Okay, but, good. Um, and, and it has a 
a couple of instruments on a porch with some flowers around it, really kind of a neighborhoody feel. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a little bit of a mystery in there or, or a puzzle in there. You'll see a couple of birds. And, you, and for those who are familiar with the different bird types, we because Porch Fest came from Ithaca, New York, mm -hmm. and we, we were one of the groups that brought it to Massachusetts, we have the New York State bird and the Massachusetts black cap chickadee hidden in the inside the label. So oh. look out for that. All so right. we had a little fun with this. I had maybe a little too much fun. What's the New York State bird? I don't remember off oh. the top of my head. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Is it modeled after anybody's porch in particular? Yours, perhaps? <laughs> no, oh, it's no, not just no, a we, generic porch. Yeah, just generic porch. We, okay. we, we searched through a lot of imagery over a couple of days and right. came up with one that looked yeah. really good. Well, that sold like fun. Yeah. Uh, is it, so is it going to be available all the yeah. time now? Or? Yeah, it'll be a, available in cans at the tap room and at a couple of local places. It, it's going to be on tap at a few restaurants okay. soon, and it'll be on tap at Break Rock Brewing. What's it taste like? Uh, it's Well, if you've ever had uh, one of the popular types of California commons is Anchor Steam. If you've ever tried that, it will be similar to that. Okay. Has kind of a light amber color to it. And I do have the, the tasting notes if you're oh, interested. Wow, it's so interesting. It's you really did get into it. it. It's described as <laughs> a slightly fruity beer with a caramel malt sweetness, showcasing rustic and traditional hop characteristics. It's a light amber, medium bodied. Um, it's a great beer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and you mentioned uh, T-shirts, and I see that Bill is wearing one from this year's events. So there you go. So how and uh, where do I get those? Well, you can order them on our website, porchfestquincy.org. Okay. They'll be available for sale at the beer of event tonight as well. Okay. And uh, yeah, you order them online. You can pick them up at Coffee Break Cafe, or we'll deliver them to your house if you're in Quincy. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Um, now, some of the bands you said that uh, are in this year's event have been with you from the start. So, is it the same members? Do you know as well? Um, for the most part, really? yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the bands are still together, and they come by every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that you and your daughter have performed in years past. Uh, will that be the case again this year? No, no. I will. Okay. Um, I will be uh, probably jumping in on a few songs with the WSU Bluegrass Band, okay. and, and maybe something else. Okay. Um, a good point too that you brought up is it's all different kinds of music, right? Oh, all different kinds of genres. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, reggae to folk to rock to classic rock. We even have a. Um, an ACDC cover band this year, which oh. is a new one <laughs> called Power Up. Okay. So pretty excited about that. And I mentioned earlier we have the Atlantic Youth Orchestra yes. also yeah. playing. Um, we also have a uh, local musician, Anthony Andronico, um, the, uh, the Ward 2 counselor's father, uh -huh. who plays around town. He'll be performing down in Squamish. Oh, no kidding. And um, we have the uh, Heather Lynn, who's got sort of an upbeat country feel to it. She's a new performer this year. Um, Chrysalis Wind Trio which is uh, a combination of a bassoon, an, an ob obiest, and uh, mm. English horn. So as you can see, you know, just the full genre, yeah. full spectrum of music, everything from established musicians who have been playing for year prof years professionally to a um, couple of high school kids getting together and creating a band. And so will people be able to see uh, on the schedule what types of music so they can kind of pick mm -hmm. and choose? Yeah, you know, so go, yeah. on the on the printed schedule, we'll just have the name and location, yeah. but online, y there's a blog post on our website for every single band, okay. and each in the blog post, when you click on it, you can go to their online content okay. if they have anything. So if they have a YouTube channel, if they have an Apple Music or you know Spotify playlist, mm -hmm. it'll it'll be there. Okay, good. So, and Bill, you've probably seen, I mean, music in Quincy in general, the arts in general, it's really exploded yeah. you know, over the past couple of years, you know, particularly with the advent of the Hancock Adam Adams Common, mm -hmm. you know, providing a venue uh, for performances um, like this. So yeah. as a resident, do you think that's a good thing? Yeah, no, this is, um, it, it's, it's, it's been great, right? Yeah. It's been great since like the first year of Porch Fest mm -hmm. where we, we uh, kind of saw like this, this organic interest start and, and it kind of exploded from there. So I think, um, yeah, it, but it, you're right, it, it, it spreads like beyond Porch Fest throughout mm -hmm. the city. It, you see a lot more concerts happening. Um, I think I'm going to see Cracker at the Veterans Memorial Stadium this weekend, which oh, yeah. I didn't imagine I was ever going to say. Well. Um, and it, so, yeah, we're seeing a lot more of this throughout the city. I think it's a, I think it's a great thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. not only music but arts too with the, the new mm -hmm. arts gallery. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well. Yeah. yeah. What's exciting about 
seeing how Quincy's evolving is, you know, you've, you've got the downtown, which is now starting to become a restaurant destination. For sure. We have the Hancock Adams Green, which has become, uh, common rather, uh, that's become an arts destination. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of stuff during the year from Country Fest to, you know, all kinds of different performances. Yep. Swing on the Common not too long ago. Yeah, it so it's, a, and then you, you see places like the Poor Yard that and I have live music outdoors. And what we're starting to see is just a real good, in addition to the restaurant destination that Quincy's becoming, we're almost starting to become a music destination. Mm. I think the two together make for a really great community building. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's also, I think, filtered down to the schools. Um, so, and Bill, your mom might have talked about this as well, but the, the combined uh, marching band has come, you know, years from where it was just a couple of years ago, really. So it's really yeah. good to see. No, that yeah, that is yeah, that is that is phenomenal. I have, I have a, a few boys in the high school here at Quincy High, yeah, and like and the getting exposure to that has been, it's been, I, I've never been able to play a horn or anything like that, but yeah. like uh, again, a great appreciation for people can that can pick that up and seeing the the kids in the high school like do what they do is amazing, and maybe inspire younger kids too, you know, hundred uh, percent yeah. to at least try it. Yep. Uh, social media, yes, I'm guessing. Yep, so if you go to our website, you can link to the different uh, social media accounts we have. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at this okay. point. Okay. Yep. And everything that, in, if you follow us on those uh, platforms, you'll get updates almost every day of what bands we're announcing and other things that we're announcing. It's a good way to, good way to stay in tune with the festival. You can also sign up for our email list on the website as well. Oh, good, okay. Yeah. Um, I, know I, ask, I know I ask every year, and every year I get the same answer, but what happens if it rains? We're from New England, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my answer, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. We, we, we forge on, no rain date. <laughs> it would be next to impossible to kind of coordinate a, a rain date for... A hundred plus bands. hundred plus bands, which equates to several hundred volunteers, right. people yeah. with their schedules. And it's, it's hard enough trying to arrange it for one day. But we do, um, we do get a lot of support. So in, in one year where we started to see a little bit of inclement weather coming in, the HouseNet Community Council like, quickly assembled and brought us all of their easy up tents. Yep. And, and, and people have now built that into their part of hosting is mm -hmm. if they need a tent, they'll bring one. The backup, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And a lot, but a lot of people have covered porches and it works out pretty well. Yeah, that's so. true too. Um, well, there's an opportunity to, to sell, you know, porch fest ponchos and yeah, porch okay. fest umbrellas. <laughs> You've just joined the committee. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, um, do you need any help uh, putting this together, Walter? Yeah, we, we've got great volunteers. Yeah. As I said, Stacy LeMay down in Squanum, Bill in Marymount, my wife Catherine Hubley in, in Wollaston Hill. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, just we've had, got a great set of volunteers. I, if you want to help out one of the porch hosts, get mm -hmm. things set up and so forth, we're, we're happy to put you to work and helping out and also handing out flyers if you're interested in doing that and selling shirts. If mm -hmm. it, especially if someone would like to set up a stand and sell some shirts for us, that would be very appreciated. Okay, all right, good to yeah. know. Um, anything else we should let folks know about right now about Porch Fest Quincy uh, 2023? I would, I'd say in addition to Break Rock Brewing helping out with funding through the beer world, we also received a grant from the Mass Cultural Commission this year as well to Very help nice. out with some of the costs. So big thanks to them and also thanks to the individual donors that um, have sent in donations to help you know pay for things like our insurance and, mm -hmm. and website and everything that goes into it. Things you don't even think of, right? But, but you are a registered nonprofit 501c3, yep. so uh, donations uh, are tax deductible. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Um, First year hosting uh, this year, Bill. So, yep. uh, any uh, trepidation going into it, or any advice no, no, for, uh, for, the for hosts? My uh, my volunteers throughout the years have kind of paved the way, so yeah. I kind of know the ins and outs of this at this point. Yeah. Um, and um, I think, like you know, parting words, it's just easy fun. It's, it's like it's like, like anyone should go check it out. It's just like uh, you can show up, hang out, walk around, and it's all there for you. And it's because of all the amazing volunteers and the bands and porches. Yeah, I'm sure you get a lot of uh, you know uh, folks pushing strollers, uh, walking yeah. dogs, uh, things like that. It truly is a uh, yeah. neighborhood event. Super yeah. laid back, very neighborhood event. Yeah. All right. Yeah, def definitely a good mix of people who attend. Uh, you see families, you see you know groups of teenagers, you see you know f folks from all different. Uh, areas of the city and all different types of folks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Good to talk to you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks Have for having a great us. Porsche Fest again this year. And uh, again, thank you for watching us here at AM Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. We'll see you next time.